Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, joined once again by the Five Foot Wonder. Hello. Jill Simonello here in sunny Palm Springs. Palm Springs, yes, California. <laughs> I know, where are we? <laughs> like, where are we? Sorry, been a long day of travel. We have the Colorado, or Colorado again, Silverado ZR2. We're going to do a driving. Long we're day doing, of travel, let's start there. <laughs> we're doing off-road, we're getting gnarly tomorrow. No, what I'm going to do right now is I want to walk around the exterior of this truck, and I'm going to do interior, then again, tomorrow we're going to do a bunch of off-road driving. So let's start with the exterior. Yes. of this blue Silverado ZR2. Yes. All right, so what do we got here? We have the new front end. Um, yeah, so again, when we talked about the exterior in uh, the Silverado 1500 in the previous video, we mentioned that there is a new grill or a different grill for each trim. And this is the grill for the ZR2. And there's a lot of good stuff going on here. So first off, you have a completely blacked out appearance here, except for this silver floating bow tie. It's a flow tie, flow it's a, tie. It's float a tie. floater. Um, <laughs> but what I love about it, and I think is really cool, is the red outline. Okay, I am, I probably already taken 20 photos of this because I am really geeked out about that. Silly little thing, but I really like it. So you've got that going on, and then you have these unique little parking lights. I guess you'd yeah, call they're, them parking they're lights. Of a, they're kind of a marker light, but the interesting here is they're on the, they're on the mirror too, real quick. They're on the mirror here too. It's inside the truck. You can turn that light on. And so, oh, we have a little, oh, look how light, yeah. A little Easter egg bow tie. Ooh, sorry, sorry. Squirrel, look at that. Squirrel. All right, uh. so, so we have that, then we have this, which is the new turn signal, yeah. right? Would you like me to flip the signal? <laughs> Let me flip the signal. She's gonna flip the signal. Flip it, flip it. Oh, there we go, flip the signal. Signal, so, um, a couple things, first of all, we're letting this run because we have noise over there and figure what the heck we'd rather listen to this than that noise over there this is the 6.2 liter that's the same engine that's in the high country we have a new kind of you can see the airflow kind of thing going on top another thing that's important here too is we have different grill down here or different bottom skid fascia plate. skid yeah. plate right skid plate goes all the way back we do have one of the transfer case as well 30 almost 32 inches of front um approach angle that's different than the prior generation or the prior like Silverado Trail Boss. Hey look what do we have here? Red tow hooks. <laughs> no we have tow hooks. We have tow hooks. Just tow hooks. Um, <laughs> let's let tow hooks. But basically it's a Trail Boss two inch lift it's got different tires the suspension is a little bit different but we have that plus we have the new grill. The biggest thing with the flow tie here and with this um, front fascia is talk about real fast with towing 8,800 pounds of towing on this lower than the regular 1,500 because less airflow. Airflow does matter. Most towing tests are determined by how cool the engine is, which is part of the SAE J2807 standards. They have a stamp test. So um, we have a little less airflow, which is why the towing is a little bit different. We do have the, the cameras up front. Looks like a little washer fluid can go in that camera. Yep. And then we have the different, uh, like I said, skid plate, different fascia. We and do it have- it looks like fog, fog lights here. Yep. Different than the high country, but it still has like kind of um, like Right, a little the, lined effect. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's uh, let's come around here. There's less, tra less traffic over here. Okay. So we have still some meaty off-road tires. 33 inches with um, 18 inch rims. Yep. And we have a new uh, cover here. You can see the scrapes built up on that. That's what happens when you go off-roading. This has got the same two inch lift, like I said, with the Trail Boss. Interesting thing that we talked with the um, one of the engineers about is no mud flaps. And the reason for that was the last minute change is that off-roading, they were getting the mud flaps were getting stuck and going <laughs> up through this part right here. And so they found, they just took them off because they didn't need them. So yep. um, front locker on this, different than Trail Boss, front locker and rear locker, but the rear locker is driver selectable. Trail Boss, it's a, it's a G80 locker, which is automatic. This is an optional skid plate, or skid, not skid plate, but- Rock rail. Rock rail, that's the accessory. What's nice about it is that it, it has a little interesting shape. You still can kind of put your foot on it, but it definitely keeps things away from the truck. Okay, come around the back and uh, this has got one of their accessory exhaust systems built into it. Yep. And so you can hear it just rumble. It sounds so good. Now, they kept dual exhaust, but they got rid of the bezels here because it kept tearing them off off-road. So check that out. <laughs> you tear them off, but guess what? You don't put them on. No, but also have a full-size tire, under, uh, tire underneath. Um, I don't think the other trims have a spare tire at all. So full-size spare underneath here. Um, well, I think they do, but I think they have an all-terrain. Oh, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this, okay. This, this one, this tire actually matches. It's yeah. a, it, it's a real same spare. wheel yeah, and yeah. everything. It's it's full-size real everything, same weight, everything. 
but mounted underneath. Um, so I have to turn the vehicle off to show you something I found that I really like. Okay, but before you do that, can you give us a little rev? I can give you a rev. I might blow out the speaker here, but let's try it. Yeah, so take that electric trucks. <laughs> Can't get that sound anymore. All okay. right, what'd back, you find? Back, back. I'm going back. Back, 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 back. Okay, back. so we all know I'm on the petite side of things, but that's not actually why I like this. So first off, this is a key fob, and what you have is the, and this is probably not new, but I like it anyway. So um, you double press the tailgate button, and it just. Yeah. But wait. But okay, there's more. There's more. What I really love about it, so first off, that was kind of cool. Then you can see the beautiful ZR2 logo mm -hmm. in the bed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I think they said there's 12 tie downs back here, which is more than. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This, this is it. This is what I like. <laughs> it's the stupid, simple little things. Okay. You're coming out. You, you yeah. brought stuff out of the truck bed. Your hands are full. Like you could literally just take your elbow and put it up your knee you put it up i think that is really cool and not unique or new but i like it it, it is nice it's a nice feature I, I give her that one um and people that you know the thing is that's been out for a little while but people don't always notice that stuff like we know the stuff because we cover the industry so quite tightly but you may not notice it so inside the cabin um did you want to hop in and show that off-road mode on that screen because we just have a zr2 on the window or the sill plate we have a little bit of Yellow. Yellow stitching. Yellow stitching, and that's about it, right? That was about what? Yeah, I mean, the, so the seats are different. Um, these okay. are completely new and unique to this vehicle. Uh, so the bolstering is going to be different. The padding is going to be different. Just these, these are special sports seats, okay. I think they call them, for this vehicle. And it does not, it, it is not shared with any other Silverado. So special to this vehicle. So you have a different pattern um, on here. There's um, some different stitching, but yeah. So. That's gonna be the big thing. We'll talk about how these actually feel and our driving impressions. Yeah, I was gonna say, we have 150 miles tomorrow and I really wanna test all these seats because that's been my uh, my issue with GM trucks. But um, I thought you had an off-road screen inside. You I, you were playing around here. Uh, I didn't know if you had something. By the way, that was a that was a hell of an entrance. That was like, not even- Step hop? There was nothing there. That was like a Olympic trial thing. Like, missed everything. Okay, so we have some off-road modes. That's what I was looking at right there. Yep. So you have your, what what gear you're in, as far as two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, and you have your d angles. So, so whether high or low. Are there other options now that's just gonna be going through? Yep. That's, so, okay, so you have that. Um, is there a spot for the rear, for the lockers? I feel like, oh, right there, towards the end. Yep. So you have the rear locker and a front locker, and you can have front and rear locked at once, or you could have rear only locked. And that's really gonna matter when you're off-roading and you're getting really stuck. Or um, uh, boat ramps, the big deal with lockers is boat ramps. So that way you can back up the boat without wheel slippage and you have both tires that are engaged. But I think that's about it with this truck. I think everything else is pretty much standard. Like I said, it's a Trail Boss. So think about it this way, it's, it's a, a Trail Boss and steroids. <laughs> Basically, I mean, you, now you don't have the extra horsepower like you would have Ram TRX and things like that. There's some argument to be made whether you need the off-road or not because it is cool, sucks a lot of fuel though, and just depends what you're doing. But there was a question about Jill's seating position in one of the videos. So Jill's five foot wonder, and uh, she has a unique seating position. Basically, um, you can take a nap behind her. Okay, so this gauge that you saw underneath here is, it on is also on the head-up display. Yep, so you don't need to look down as yeah. much, so which is great for you, because then you can just look over everything. If I could see over the <laughs> Okay, I will say, um, well, yeah, uh, I, 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 I don't- Show people, show the people at home. I, I'm like, I don't know if you can, like, yeah, that that's basically um, my view, and it's of the <laughs> raised roof, or raised uh, hood. Um, so I, I don't know. It'll be it'll be interesting driving this tomorrow to see how I feel with the visibility. Yeah. Uh, because th this this is as high as I can get the seat up. Um. Yeah. So it'll well well. I've got a dangly foot. Yep. All right. So there you go. <laughs> Tune in tomorrow. Or no, later on in this video here, right at the we finish this up, we will have the driving impressions. We we'll do some off roading and tell you what it is behind the wheel. Even Jill's wheel. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff coming. 
real quick, I forgot the max payload is 1,429 pounds. And here you go is the trailering, which was 8,900 pounds right there. Low and then drive mode is knob right below. That's right. There you go. So now you'll experience that one pedal drive feature. Okay. And then last thing, far right piano, all lock. Yep. So the drive mode for train mode doesn't automatically turn that on. It does not. Do you have a drive mode that turns that on automatically? We don't. Unlike the competitors, we don't try to overcomplicate things or pre-configure. We want it to be a driver's truck. I see. Oh. Yeah. So as you get to the top, you know, you feel it starting to bind as you make that right hand bend. You can obviously drop them all by hitting that far right button, or you can just go to real. Have fun. All right, sounds good. All right, going up Locker Hill in the ZR2. Um, that's the best I got. <laughs> Man, I'm just trying to capture the video of us going up and hopefully right. like not like dying. So we have many cameras going at the moment and uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure you get through this. This is a really cool canyon, it really shows up the capability of this truck. And so um, got to follow the spotter. I got camera galore. I got lots of sand going through, okay. And then the fast line, another spotter. In fact, you can do this with a 145 inch wheelbase or whatever this truck is. Um, a long truck is pretty impressive. Okay, so then we'll get some binding from the lockers being on. So we had both lockers on, four low, uh, four load mode, train mode, and lockers on. So again, with lockers, you make a sharp turn, you'll bind because both tires are spinning at the same revolution. There's your, the more you know for today. Dun, dun, dun. So, let's go down. Locker's yeah. going down in front too. Uh, front camera going down. This is cool. Do you want to get the, can you take a photo or something like this? So, I'll do a little video. I don't know what you want to do. But yeah, so this is, this is uh, really cool that you can see what's in front of you. And then that way you can, well, know what the heck you're doing. No, I love turning the front cameras on for, um, when, you know, when you can't see over the hood. Yeah, yeah, especially. <laughs> Sky view, right? And wait for them to just get down to the bottom. All right. Good to go. Oh wow, that's like a narrow little area there. It is. Why? <laughs> this is a interesting spot for a full size truck. It's like we're surfing down. Woo! -hoo! Everybody surfing down. It, isn't that? Well, that's a California song, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm butchering it like crazy. It, it, well, yeah, and that's the only reason why YouTube isn't gonna ding you for that because <laughs> you butchered it. <laughs> Thank you for your constructive criticism. You're welcome. All right, there we go. Joe, Joe's turn next. No, it's amazing how smooth this goes up. At least they made it look really smooth. Yeah, I mean, for such a long wheelbase vehicle, I mean, it's plenty capable. Yeah. And lockers are ideal for this, right? So one tire is up in the air, but you still have the articulation, still have the locker. I'm like, so this is where I go through at 50 miles an hour? What? <laughs> Quick, Jill. There's a Chicago stop sign. Go, go, go. Suck it. <laughs> All right. I was thinking about I should just do this with my phone because easily transferred. But this is the benefit of cameras in this little valley, right? You can't see anything, but you have all these cameras, and that's the benefit of this new screen is you can actually see stuff, see those brilliant cameras, and that's uh, yeah, really cool. This is where I go down 50 miles an hour, right? Well, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> 
So this is, uh, so yesterday I said you can take uh, the driver out of Chicago, but you can't take Chicago out of the driver. This is the one, the one instance <laughs> where you can take the Chicago out of the driver. It is kind of crazy though. It's, um, it's slippery going down. I mean, definitely slippery. And that's fine. I mean, the tires are, are, are uh, deflated down to about 26 PSI. And so they have more rubber on the road, which is holds you, but it's just a surface. So to be able to go down that calmly, when you may not even be able to walk down that calmly. No, I would fall on my butt. <laughs> right, and just slide down, right, right. Take one for the team, but yeah, so it did pretty well here. Well, I, yeah, no, I wanna say, like, that was easy. Like, looking at people going up and down, I thought it was gonna be a lot harder than it was. And I was, I was well, maybe a little bit nervous. I mean, you know, I have all of, the, like, I, there's me and one other female who are journalists on this program. So there's always a little bit of, um, I don't want to say intimidation, but there's always a little bit of, I can't screw this shit up. <laughs> right, right. I don't want to be that girl. Um, and I, I'm, I'm confident enough in my own driving skills that I don't think I'm going to be the one. But, you know, there's always just that little bit of, no, I cannot, I cannot. Like, dudes can do something wrong and it's totally cool. But as soon as a girl does something wrong, like, that's all she wrote, yeah. literally. Yeah. <laughs> right. But you did well. So it trucked it well and... Uh pretty calm relaxed. Yeah, no, I'm 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 impressed. I was like, wait a minute, what's what's going on? Okay. It's your seatbelt. I thought I broke no, something. Holy cow. <laughs> um just a quick update from the off-road track. He's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow, we may or may not have caught some massive air back there. So we're doing a lead and follow, which means trucks are in front of us, trucks behind us, but it's a really fast lead and follow. And so we are off-road driving and Jill just wow, um, nailed it, wow. Uh, Alright, there you go. Fourth, uh, <gasps> uh, <a> <laughs> wow, that, that, I mean we were, bam. So, I, I saw the bump and I was like, oh, we're totally getting air there. Yeah, but, yeah. But this is the, the desert run area where they said you could go up to about 50 miles an hour. We're at about 35. I mean, so I'm not going super fast. I'm leaving probably, what would you say, how many? You've got far? at least four or five car yeah. lanes. And we're trying to keep we're trying to keep up, but we can't. Like, well, we're trying to keep up and keep distance at the same time yeah, because it's really, really dusty. Uh, but damn, this is fun. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Except for, uh, can we just not catch air all the time? <sighs> My goodness. Somebody needs to go pee again, clearly. <laughs> That's, well, that could be true. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> in case you missed it, I'm having a lot of fun here. Uh, I'm surprised at the capability of this truck. I don't know why, but um, we caught a little air. We're going through a little bit of a desert run here. Uh, and I mean, we're flying. I, I mean, I, I'm going about 40 miles an hour and um, on, on the road, the suspension feels a little squishy, but as soon as you get out here, I mean, it just, it, it's awesome. And so it feels remarkably smooth um, for what we're doing out here. And, you know, we've hit some rocks, we've hit some bumps and going up some of the obstacles that we've done, I'm really impressed at how smooth and easy it was. Cause it was a big truck. So um, I'm 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 impressed. Uh, I don't I don't know what to say other than um, if I were ever gonna be like doing one of those um, getaway movies and driving through a desert and you know having to to get away from the bad guy, I think I'd want to be in this truck. Right, right. <laughs> That's about all I got. I think. Max speed is 50. I'm going 25. Max speed is 50. 25. 50. Are you telling me you'd like me to go faster? I can totally do that. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You can. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely need a handle over here. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. When you are dealing with the shifter, um, just driving normally, it doesn't bother me. But as soon as you're trying to do some of the intricate, you know, uh, one pedal driving or shifting to neutral, that neutral is a hard gear to hit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
So my driving impressions off-road are pretty much the same as Jill's. This is a really incredible Chevy. I'm really impressed with uh, the engineering they've done, suspension. It handles the road pretty well, even catches air pretty well. And uh, definitely with off-road driving, it always feels like you're going faster than you actually are. So yeah, the tires are down. In this case, we have done 26, and uh, they are absorbing most of the stuff, and we're keeping lots of rubber on the road. So again, but I think the biggest thing, the biggest thing, is my butt doesn't hurt. Yes, they've made the seats more comfortable, according to the interior designer. And why that's not throughout the rest of the Chevy lineup, I don't know. But in this case, I can take the beating and not feel like I need to go to masseuse. Okay, let's talk about one thing that Jill has found early on here. We we're just kind of talking about. It's uh, GM products been doing for a while. It's, it's this oddly shaped kind of mirror. So the mirror has the sides come down. So it's not a complete like rectangle. It's more like a. I don't know, just a, a different type of shape. Um, it's a trapezoid. It's trapezoid. So, um, <laughs> what what you know when you talk about this mirror, you're talking about what you don't like is you're losing a little bit back here, which means yeah. that from the back, the the mirror hits headrest, headrest, the front sides of it, the inner sides. Yeah. But you can't get the outer side, the outer piece of glass over there. Yeah. Outer piece of glass there, you can't get it either. And I did it as well, and I can't get that uh, on either side of the headrest either. So, it feels like that even though the shape is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. that maybe practicality is not... Yeah, it just feels like you're losing a little bit of visibility because the edges of the mirror bisect the center of the headrests. So you have just the area between the headrests that you can't see. You're not utilizing the full window. I, to me, that just seems weird. Yeah. Now, you can, on some of these trucks, you can do the digital view mirror, like this. Yeah. Um, which is a camera on top of the bezel that's above that um, window back there. One thing to note is that if you put a topper on this truck, you do lose that camera angle because you're basically getting topper over top of the other camera. But yeah, that's kind of what it is. Yeah, it's weird. So you're probably wondering about fuel economy with this truck, and I was too. So this is the screen we first got in, and I thought I'd just kind of show you what the trip odometer had said. Now, these trucks have been driven off road and have been idling a lot, so I think this is a pretty good number to be honest with you. So here's a legit question for you. I've been about this all morning. Would you consider this? A true Raptor fighter, like, because that's always been a thing for years and years and years. Nobody had a Raptor fighter. Nobody had a Raptor fighter, right? Then the T Ram comes out TRX, and that's actually a Raptor fighter, legit, right? I would say the TRX is like a Raptor demolisher. <laughs> right, right. So if you're a consumer, and this came out, do you think that's a natural comparison to Raptor, or do you think this is like maybe like the Ford Tremor situation where it's it's not quite the same as a Raptor? I don't know that it's quite the same, but I mean, Raptors don't have launch mode. I know, it, it, it's interesting to me. Um, I, I guess I can see it being a Raptor fighter. Yeah, I mean, what's, what's the, the, I, I honestly don't know the horsepower of the Raptor off the top of my head. It's like 500 and something. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's more, right? It's not 700 like the Ram TRX is. I think it's 500. I think it's pretty comparable. People want more horsepower from this. They were, they want a supercharger on this. They want to make it that, that TRX kind of fighter, that kind of situation. But so, so here's the thing. I would say that this is a Raptor fighter, not a TRX fighter. Hmm. I think I think you're right. I think I'm, this would be a Raptor, a Raptor fighter more TRX. And now I'm going to say something really, really controversial. All right. Really controversial. So tell me if you think I'm right or wrong. You can comment below. I think the Hummer EV is the TRX fighter. That is a good one because, you know, so the TRX is a toy, right? Mm -hmm. And the Hummer's a toy. Mm -hmm. All right, now on the paved road, hold on. Yeah, I don't think it's as quick as like the Ram TRX or the Ford Raptor, but I think it's plenty. And off-road is plenty fast. On-road, you may be like, oh, I gotta put a supercharger on it. I think you could have pressed the gas pedal a little bit harder is what I think. And I could have been a sport mode. <laughs> yeah. So you just gotta drive a little bit differently, I should say. It's not, not as much get up and go as you would think of other big off-road trucks. But overall, big fan. On-road, it does feel pretty squishy. Um, it definitely glides, but that's what you expect with an off-road tuned suspension and the off-road tires. The biggest thing I was thinking about was road noise with these tires. And do you hear anything? 
Well, you know, we really haven't gotten up over 70 miles an hour yet. Yeah. So we're, we're going about 45, 50. Um, I hear a low hum, but but I'll be honest, the tire noise and the hummer, ha ha ha, hum, hummer, uh, was um, worse. But again, you didn't have the engine or the exhaust note right, or any of right. that Covering to up cover to up. Sure. Um, so, I mean, we haven't gone that fast yet. I will be very, like, when hopefully for my driving impressions, we'll be able to, to be on a 70 mile an hour highway. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's all I, I, I haven't heard a whole lot of road noise. I'm pretty comfortable, like I said. The seats have been in all day now, and uh, I'm still comfortable seats, so. I'm like. Yeah, butt check. Butt check. That's what's going on. Butt check. Um, I do have heads-up display on here. I forgot to mention el elsewhere. Um, it's pretty cool. You can see the off-road, like, the uh, uh, departure angles and, you know, what you're doing degrees of off-road, too. What kind of off-road mode I'll be in. honest, though. When we were off-roading, I did not look at that once. Well, we were driving really fast. <laughs> <laughs> we were. Well, even on some of the obstacles, though. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I was just like, I need to make sure my tires aren't hitting rocks. I am not looking at that display. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, but no, I think I, you know, like I said, overall, I'm a big fan. I, 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 I really like it. I really like it. Like, I, this is something I would actually legit buy. That kind of was thinking about buying. I don't know. We'll see. I'm, it, I'm is, curious. So, is there something you don't like? I mean, so yeah, again, so, uh, yeah. So far, I mean, uh, again, first taste, right? So you only get yeah. it for the day. It, we've only had a day with this, whatever. Um, I really don't have anything I don't like. Um, you know, Dri your driving situation is good. Yeah, driving position is good. I got set buttons for On stuff. On our uh, right hand side, we're gonna come past this uh, rock formation called Skull Rock. Right. Uh, use your imagination. You can see that it uh, looks like a giant skull. There'll probably be some people standing right in front of it. It's uh, just past here where the cars are parked. Yeah, driver position is good. Uh, I can reach everything. Really easy to reach everything. I like the design inside a lot. That was my biggest complaint. I really had a couple complaints last generation was, or the, before we refresh, was interior, uh, dash, seat comfort, and, um, but overall, I love the powertrains. I love the powertrains. I love the way it looks. This thing is probably the most, one of the most badass Silverados I've seen in a long time. And it just, it's like, this is what I, this is when I grew up in Michigan, you know, that was, this is what they wanted the Silverado to be like. This is what Chevy trucks was. I mean, they were badass trucks and they lost Just that over right of me now. So, yeah. It looks good. Mm -hmm. Drives good. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, that, is it, now, does it tow it a lot? So no. Scary. Does it have, uh, it has 1,400 pounds of payload. It doesn't tow a whole lot, right? 8,000 8, pounds. But it does, I mean, that's pretty average for towing. You still have a camper behind here. You don't need to tow 10,000 pounds of a half ton truck, which is... Sometimes ridiculous to do, so yeah, I think it fits all those hits all those uh, bells and whistles there as far as targets, I should say. It's all the targets there for you know what I'd expect from the truck and having the control of having the control of electron locking front and rear locks, um, push, push of a button. I mean, that's really cool too. And I get it what you're saying with the graphics. I mean, it'd be drive mode graphics could be a little bit you know sexier, right? But you know that could be a software update later. It just surprises me that, you know, they went all in on Hummer with the, you know, hiring a video game designer to do the graphics and, you yeah. know, how well that worked. And to me, this is almost like um, a wasted opportunity. Yeah, I'd agree. All right, so now Jill's behind the wheel. So Jill, on the road driving, what are your thoughts? You know, earlier when we were talking during your driving impressions, we were saying that you couldn't really like you could hear the low hum of the tire noise and now that we're going about 75 miles an hour I hear it a lot more okay. and and so I mean anybody buying this truck isn't um, gonna go into this thinking oh it's going to be super quiet no you, you know there's gonna be tire noise and I'm just basically confirming that <laughs> um, but the other thing that I want to say is you know we were also talking about the the horsepower and is it enough and I mean, okay, is it enough? I mean, a V8 is always enough. But I will say, it doesn't give you that, you know, push back in your seat, um, gleeful feeling, you know, that makes you want to giggle when you, I, I don't know, maybe it doesn't make you want to giggle, but it makes me want to giggle when I put my foot down on the accelerator. I mean, it's the same kind of giggle when we got air. Like, right, that yeah. was fun. Right. And that made me giggle, and it made me, you know, I couldn't stop laughing while we were filming. Like, it is not that kind of fun. It's fine. It does the job, um, and it, it does it well. Um, 
and and there's a great exhaust note and it sounds really nice and you can feel the vibration through the foot pedal um, so there's there's a lot of really good things that are, are, are going on to it but it's like yeah. Ah. yeah so you know that was 70 to 80 and um, and it was like okay we got there right but I, I wasn't gonna beat that uh, BMW that just passed us well, so, the interesting part is that there's no sport mode we can find on the, on the console. So, no. like, you know, usually you turn on sport mode and the edge life and life up and stuff happens. And so I, I, I think it'd be an easy fix for them to add a sport mode on this. And I think that would really make it, would take away that little piece. Well, and I'm just, you know, and I haven't played around with the paddle shifters really. And so I do wonder if, um, you know, okay, so let's, let's downshift a couple. I mean, yeah, okay. That, that gives you a little bit of a better throttle response just by tapping down a couple of gears before you're going to pass. Right. Um, so, I mean, that, that, could, that could be it, too. Um, I also noticed there wasn't, like, a kick down. Like, sometimes when you mash the, the gas pedal and it feels like you're on the floor, but you're not on the floor, and you can push it just a little bit further, and that drops the gears. Yep. This doesn't have that. Um, so, I, I is, it, is, is 420 horsepower enough? Yes. Um, you know, is it really fun on a trail? Yes. Is it comfortable? Yes. Uh, so I, I, you know, the seats are comfortable. I even sat in the back seat a little bit and was just like, oh, these even feel better. So, you know, they've done a great job with the seats. Um, I will say the one thing, and again, not really going to matter for pretty much like 95% of the population, but I do feel like I'm sitting a little bit low. The belt line is high. Um, the gauge cluster pops up a little bit. Um, the hood, you know, with the, the beefy engine pops up a bit. And so, I, I mean, I'm getting used to sitting a little bit lower and, you know, using the, the lines to make sure I'm staying centered. But, you know, I would really like maybe another inch or two and, and this broken record here. So, I mean, again, 95% of the population not going to care. Um, and I'm getting used to it. And, I, you know, the more I drive it, the more comfortable I feel. Um, but but overall, I think this is very solid. I think it feels pretty comfortable. You know, the, the steering wheel feels good. The materials feel good. The technology looks good. Um, so, I, I, you know, and I asked Tim, you know, is there anything that you didn't like about it? And you were like, no, I, I want to buy this truck. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, it would be my driving position and it would be like, you know, at 70, the tire noise. Yeah, okay. But, Really, not much else. Oh, oh, one more thing though. Yeah. The lack of graphics when yeah. you when you switch between your modes. Like I totally geeked out of that in the Hummer video, and they paid all this money to have all those graphics done for the Hummer EV. Like, why couldn't you just like shuffle some of that over here? It is weird. I mean, it, and there's no sport mode. It's like it's like it seems like it could be a sport mode, be some better graphics, some cool stuff on the screen, because it's all digital. They have the yeah, really do it. So, they have the capacity to you know, do it. So those are really small things that like it's a software update. It's a thing that they can take care of it. So a few details, uh, fast facts, crew cab only, 323 rear gears, um, 6.2 liter V8 is I believe the standard engine for that. 420 horsepower, 470 foot pounds torque I think it is. Was the I number. thought it was maybe 460. Yeah, somewhere in the range. Um, we have 1400 pounds of payload, 8100 pounds of towing, and uh, it starts at 67,000. There's not many options. So you're probably 70, 70, you know, 70, 72, whatever. And not the other markup thing kind of stuff going on out the door. Uh, probably 77, 78 with uh, uh, processing fees, taxes, depending on your state, that kind of stuff. So, um, cheaper. So, in my view, it's cheaper than the Raptor is when you go to dealerships to buy the Raptor. On paper, they're probably pretty similar, but it seems like every time I go to buy a Raptor, they're fully loaded. They have all the different options to them. This Ford has a lot more options, so it's a higher price point. Um, it's cheaper than TRX, and to me, it's um, you could do a supercharger on this and probably get a similar TRX experience if you had a supercharger um, on the Aftermarket center. supercharger. Yeah. They're not going to add it at the dealership for no. you. But if, if, you <laughs> if, you, if you did happen to add a uh, supercharger, you could make that better driving experience. But I thought it was pretty uh, pleasurable. Um, and then, yeah. Yeah. That's, yep. good. yeah. That's good. That's all I got. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. more videos over here. Website down below. As always, if you're watching, we will see you <laughs> down the road.